Joanna Hoffman. And my name is Matthew Hoffman. And we are Living Vehicle. So this uh, project here, this is a ground up build, brand new, that's really been about eight years in the making. And uh, eight years ago in the recession, I quit my job. I was an architect at the time. This is well before I knew Joanna, my wife. I just decided that I wasn't a work for someone kind of guy. And it was terribly uninspiring. And I just wanted to get out and have a little bit more freedom. And what that meant to me was just you know, kind of be an entrepreneur and start my own company. And I thought it was gonna be an architecture company at the time. Um, but what turned into a small space renovation company only because when I quit my job, I quit my rent and I moved into an Airstream trailer that I renovated. And um, that's really what started it all. Yeah, you had, Matt had submitted it. It was kind of the only piece of work he had done that was truly his outside of his firm. Um, so he put it in his portfolio, um, portfolio started to you know, submit it to kind of local news, things like that. And kind of to his surprise, um, it got picked up pretty quickly. Um, yeah, I was in the LA Times, Sunset Magazine, all sorts of publications. And all of a sudden I got calls that said, can you do what you did for yourself for me? Your Airstream ended up on HGTV oh, yeah. and it travel, all over, like all the, the tiny place. house hunters, all of that. Yeah, uh, so nothing <laughs> creates a career like a bunch of publicity. And, um, you know, about... Long story short, about eight years later, I had a company with about 30 individuals right downtown Santa Barbara, and we were renovating projects left and right, probably about 30 at a time. And so over the course of those eight years, I did about 400 different renovation projects for custom clientele. Yeah, so Matt kind of accidentally started a architecture firm that only worked on mobile spaces. So no houses, basically our rule was, does it have wheels, can it move, we'll work on it. Right, uh, you know, I only designed one brick and mortar house, you know, after realizing that it wasn't for me. And that's really what spawned the whole company. And you know, about three, well, six years into that, you know, I met Joanna and um, brought her into the company right quick. Uh, we decided that we love to work together. And we realized that there's this great chasm in the marketplace um, that was missing because I, you know, I've been living in small spaces ever since that one Airstream trailer. And but after that, it was buses and vans and boats. You know, when I met Joanna, we moved into a boat. And we, bo we both realized, we kind of like looked at each other and said, you know what, nothing in the marketplace suits our needs. You know, because we've been living that lifestyle for so long. And we realized, you know what, it's about time we built something from the ground up that's built specifically for full-time use. And there's so many challenges. I mean, just right off the bat, Matt's 6'5". You know, there's a lot of small spaces that he literally just couldn't even stand up straight in. You know, I didn't come from a background of small spaces other than living in small apartments and things like that. So I had kind of uh, some big, big expectations in terms of, you know, comfort and functionality. And, you know, if I was going to live like this full time, you know, so it was really fun to kind of develop something together with Matt's expertise of small space living and my expertise of being a, a modern day human that likes comfort and technology. Right. And not only that, this modern day human, Joanna's also a chef. So she really understands the realities on, you know, some very intricate, you know, cooking space you know concerns when it comes to design so joanna played a huge role when it comes to kind of the lifestyle uh, and then us together combined with our experience you know that's what birthed living vehicle and so what we're going to show you today is really the result of that collective experience of us both living in small spaces for a very long time and also our professional um, architecture firm renovating small spaces for hundreds of and customers did over what, 400 yeah 400 yeah primarily airstreams but a lot of other spaces too buses and vans so we're pretty excited to show you living vehicle today this is a company that we started ourselves about a year ago and we're actually going to celebrate our one year anniversary August 21st um, so August 21st 2017 is when we started the company and um, this is actually our full-time home so not only do we run the company that creates these spaces we live in this ourselves so we can understand intimately what it is we're creating for people all right well here we are now inside living vehicle and uh, we're pretty excited to show you just what we've created. And this, uh, where we're standing in right now, this is kind of the hub of activity of the whole space. This is our combined uh, multi-purpose living, cooking, dining, and there's also guest quarters here. Yeah, so the whole unit sleeps six people. Um, we've got this bed that we're gonna show you here. This dining space, of course, converts to a bed as well. And then we've got the master bedroom in there. Um, so I'm gonna just start right off with the cool stuff here. Um, so the bed is motorized and um, comes down pretty quickly there. 
I'm going to hold it down and it stops just above the TV um, so you can still sit underneath it um, while it's down. A little ladder and you just crawl up on there. You know, it's just Matt and I in here plus our dog, but a lot of our clients love to have their, you know, kids up there, whether it's for sleeping or just kind of, you know, having a break. You know, it's really nice to have another place that's not just your bed. Um, not really a big fan of working in bed and doing other activities, so it's nice to kind of have a little loft area. Yeah, this is really our guest bed space. It's a full. It's extra long. It's actually 90 inches long. It's 10 inches longer than a king size bed. And this is built by a company called Project 2000. It was an Italian company, just recently got bought out by Lippert Components, um, but it's fantastic. The build quality is just second to none. Um, it's rated for 600 pounds. So you get a lot of kind of real quality design into this product here. Um, you, know, you can see I'm shaking it. There's really nothing that's moving. We put a five inch mattress on top of here. There's wood slats underneath and this is just, it's very lightweight. It's all built out of aluminum. And what's also really cool about this is you can always leave it made or unmade if you like, because you know, you just take it, put it up into the ceiling and your bed's in a clean environment. You don't have to always make that bed. Yeah, I'm pretty lazy when it comes to converting spaces and making beds and things like that. Matt will tell you he, um, it's funny, he's really big on kind of cleaning up major things, and then I'm really obsessed with like detailing things. Yeah, true. So, um, yeah. Makes and sense. so what's also nice about this is you can see, you know, I'm, I'm down, you can raise it just a little bit to kind of go yeah, into this, this other like mode. Big as you, honey. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. Now you can stop it there. You can see we're now in an environment where we can both have people up there kind of snoozing as guests, but if you're, say you're up late, you're hanging out, having a late you know, evening, drinking around the table, playing some cards, you can utilize both spaces at once. And we intentionally designed that. You know, by the way, this also converts into a bed. This is the kind of the third sleeping space of the, uh, of the living vehicle. And this is the same exact size as the bed above us. Uh, it's um, also a full width, but it's again, 90 inches long. So, you know, vertically, you know, um, I don't know, tall people get to enjoy this space as well. You know, it's not just limited to folks under, uh, you know, under six foot. We've absolutely had guests over right the very first time that we took this out. Uh, we took our entire company out together into the desert. And, yeah, we went to Lone Pine, California, kind of where all the great Westerns were shot, just beautiful hills and nothing else around. And in this unit alone, we slept six people. So there were two down here, two up top, and then we were in the master bedroom in this space. And it was just great to see how well it functioned. You know, so folks down here still had their privacy in a way where you're not seeing, you know, the other people because every space is private because you don't actually see the other folks that are sleeping in the space because it's kind of that over under bunk bed design. So feel free to do whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> This window package, it's an all aluminum window. It's a marine grade window. This is one of the earlier windows that we were prototyping in our design. Um, by the way, the unit that we're in right now is unit number two off the production line. And um, we've changed a lot since this unit. One of those being is the window package. We now have our windows produced by a manufacturer. It's a small Amish company out right in uh, Indiana that builds these custom for us. Um, and we've been able to kind of refine them since what we currently have. This is actually the only unit, uh, one, of, one of a couple units that have this type of window package. They're dual pane windows. You know, they're designed to be, you know, perform very well in all sorts of environments. Uh, and of course you see here, this is a good size window. It's a slider. This is an emergency egress window. So you can just get out by pulling this over. Um, every window in our unit has screens um, and it's very easy to operate. You know, this is a blackout shade. You know, it's, it's simple by design and, uh, you know, they're designed just to come up right now. We're getting some kind of interior pressure on that and you can kind of see how it's sticking to the window right now. It's quite windy outside, but they're designed so that when you let them go, they don't kind of, what, what would you call it? Like flap up really quick, kind of spin up and kind of, like hitch it, yeah. yeah, almost break, you know, it can be a little bit like intimidating. Right. This is like a slap bracelet. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, something we really value inside the design of the space is light quality. You know, there's something about a small space that if you really open up the window and kind of erode that barrier, that wall of the box, your view corridor then becomes open to the outside. You know, you're not limited by these four walls. That's not what defines your space. So the more light that we can bring into a space, the white quality that makes it feel truly residential, like a home, and then your sight line, which, you know, all these strategically placed windows are very intentional so that you don't feel like you're in a box. You know, you're in a very nice kind of modern, what would be almost a high rise apartment in the sky, but you know, you look outside and you see nature and that's what you really connect with. So as 
part of the design of living vehicle, uh, it's, it's not something that was a renovation. Um, this is not an existing shell that we kind of built an interior into. This is a ground up build. So every single component, every single part to the living vehicle is brand new, built specifically for this purpose. In that, we have a lot of flexibility and opportunity to design these various you know, envelopes, whether it's kind of the wall, the floor, and the ceiling. So there's a ton of thought that have gone into this. Uh, right out of the bat, what really differentiates ourselves from, from a product perspective is that everything's aluminum. You've got you know, to start an aluminum chassis. It's 100% aluminum welded all the way through. It's a five inch tube. Right on the A-frame, it's a seven inch A-frame chassis, uh, which brings it back to the tube construction. Now, right underneath the, uh, the floor is where the chassis resides. And we might go outside and I'll talk a little bit more about that so I can show you physically some space on that. Nevertheless, as we come up into the wall, um, the wall is also, it's 100% it's aluminum welded frame with studs every 16 inches on center. You know, that goes all the way up to the ceiling. Ceiling is an aluminum bow truss roof. Uh, it has a, a curve on the, on the roof, which allows water to shed sheet off the roof. Um, so you don't get uh, kind of pooling onto the roof as well. Uh, what you see right here is a, um, it's a kind of a, a technique which brings a little bit of warmth. Uh, it's kind of a modern warmth into the space. The wood that we use here, we're covering this wall specifically, is called black locust. It's a, um, it's a natural, naturally occurring uh, hardwood, which is very similar to the kind of the exotic wood called teak, which is found, um, you know, black locust is found right, you know, it's kind of like a weed, um, but it's on the sides of kind of roads, frankly, out in the Midwest. And so it's naturally full of oils and uh, it's rot resistant, mildew resistant, um, just by the naturally occurring properties. You know, what you see right now is just an unfinished version. This hasn't been conditioned at all. So this is its naturally occurring state. And it's just a real nice, warm, clean, modern wood. Inset with this, the reason this wall is a little thicker is for two reasons. We have it kind of holding the, tr the, uh, the jam of this sliding door. And that's what kind of dies in and also encapsulates this television. So the television is a 32 inch, uh, 12 volt LED powered uh, TV. And this is hooked up to our media center. Uh, we'll show you the technology bay a little bit later. Again, you can kind of see inside here, this is on a swing arm, but inside, this is all aluminum construction. So anything structural to this, to this unit is uh, made out of aluminum. All right, so we are in the kitchen area here. There's a lot of cool features that we've built in here. You know, like we said, we have lived in small spaces for a long time and know some of the you know, frustrations that come along with full-time living and still wanting to, you know, get along with your day as normal. Um, you know, cooking is a big one for me. I was a chef before I got into all of this. And so having a big, you know, kitchen that was really functional where you could actually have friends over and cook something that was impressive and not just kind of camping food, if you will, um, was really important to me. So one of the features that I love here is our trash chute. So we've got it separated into two parts. So if you want to do trash and recycling or compost, whatever you want, and um, literally just throw it down there and then it empties from the exterior. And um, so we can look at that later, but it literally just pulls out really easy to clean up. You're not having to kick around your trash bags in here. We've got a little puppy. She loves the trash. So having that hidden is really important for us. We've got a pretty good size sink here. We've got our filtered water here. So we have a Culligan um, water filtration system and it works great. So our fresh water, we've got a really oversized tank um, designed specifically for off-grid use. So our fresh water is 100 gallons. Um, our gray is 62 and black's 45. We've done a ton of off-grid trips, including this one that we're on right now here in Colorado. So we've done, you know, between the two of us, about a week um, we've done off-grid. And it depends on if we're just using these facilities or kind of going out into town. We found a really awesome hot springs um, near Mount Princeton where we just were before this. So we got to kind of go there, use some of those facilities, you know, take longer showers, but definitely two people a week, the water will be, you know, just, just fine if you're showering every day. You know, we do run all of our systems when we're off-grid, one of them being our dishwasher here. And as you can see, it's, it's pretty full. Um, so it's a you know standard size dishwasher, just doesn't have that second rack. Um, but I mean, it fits all of our pots and pans, dog bowls, our French press. So it's actually more efficient to do a full load of dishes in the dishwasher than by hand. Um, and I believe this takes about 2.5 to 3 gallons. So it's kind of a nice uh, excuse to just throw it all in there instead of doing it yourself. So you've got different settings. Um, you know, you've got your heavy, normal light. 
mini party. I'm not really sure what a mini party is, but um, so we do it on the light setting and that's um, kind of the energy savings one. And we've got some kind of your typical just under the sink storage there. We've got our reusable grocery bags, a bunch of stuff there that yeah, you know, the sink, when we're not doing dishes in it, it's still really helpful for food prep. Um, you know, so you've got all your great produce in there. You know, this comes out really nicely, so you're able to rinse everything. And then if you are, you know, maybe soaking your pots and pans um, before you're throwing them in there, or if it's something that you want to just clean off quickly um, so you can reuse it the next day if you're not planning on doing a load. And it's just, I mean, I love having a big sink. It's so nice to be able to fit everything in there. Um, so the countertops are all Corian. Um, so it's a nice kind of lightweight material, super durable. So we have our kitchen island here, which is also a Corian surface. Um, and the great thing about this is that it is removable. Um, so when I'm cooking, it's really nice to have it in here. You know, you've got your prep space, but if we want to open up the space, we're having a party or want to cook outside using the grill, this literally just moves outside. So there's four screws that bolt it into the floor. You just unscrew that really quickly and then just move that outside kind of next to the grill is usually where we put it. So the dog, she's got this middle shelf that's dedicated to her. And then we've got just kind of random stuff in the top and bottom there, but um, it's kind of your nice extra storage. Um, we really try to pack storage into every possible compartment so there's no wasted space. Just imagine like coming home with bags of groceries, like you have to put them somewhere. So it's really nice to kind of, you know, you have this surface, this surface, you know, not a ton of room here for prep and all of that. So it's really nice to have all of those options. Yeah, I mean, this is definitely the best place to kind of do all your cooking and prep and stuff. You know, literally just move that over, slide that into your pot. So really designed to be super functional and kind of flow with how you naturally use a space. All right, so we've got a ton of storage in these above cabinets as well. Um, these are all powder coated aluminum, by the way. So they're super lightweight, but also really durable. Um, we've got these marine grade slam latches, um, which is really nice. And you can see kind of when you shut this, kind of a nice slow cl close and then it's shut. So you don't have to worry about things opening up and things falling out of it. So this is really a ton of storage for us. Like I said, I love to cook and eat. So I'm constantly just filling this up with teas and hot sauces. And we've got about 10 bags of rice in there. So it's a ton of storage. We've got here our stovetop. Um, this is propane. So we've got a three burner. Honestly, three is pretty excessive. I never use more than two at once, but this one's pretty nice. You've got kind of this bigger one. So if you're doing a big pot, I usually use this for the kettle or, you know, something smaller. So that's really easy, you know, just put it to light, light it with your match or lighter and you're good to go. Here we've got our convection grill and microwave combo, which is really nice. So you can do stuff like cook a small chicken in it or you've cooked pizza in it before. Um, really versatile. Works great. Honestly, I do most of my cooking either on the stovetop or on the grill. It's just a lot easier. Being outside and grilling is really fun and really easy cleanup. And then we've got some other storage under here. This is kind of the biggest one for all your big pots and pans. If you've got blenders, juicers, crock pots, rice makers, all your big ticket items. Matt really got into making jerky a couple years ago. And so he had um, a meat slicer and a food dehydrator, which we used to keep under our bed, which is kind of gross. So having all of that stuff in the kitchen where it should be, is really nice. So you can see this goes all the way up to here. So you can really load that up with some big clunky items. I've got a lot more storage here in all of these drawers. You can see they come out pretty far. They're extra long. Again, cabinets are all custom made at our manufacturer and they're all uh, powder coated aluminum as well. Same kind of marine grade slam latches. So got all our kitchen stuff in here, about 15 knives. I don't know why we have that many, <laughs> but um, that's kind of all of our other storage there. Now the biggest storage that we've got, and this is where we keep most of our food. I'm going to slow-mo so you can really see how big it is. Um, so this is really awesome. Got all of our spices, kind of cooking supplies, our booze, cleaning supplies. Um, and it's just really nice to have all that room where you're not shoving things into different corners and you can have it nice and organized. 
Um, you know, you could fit a lot more stuff if you do inserts. You know, you've kind of got some containers and things like that, but you can really maximize your space even up here, different inserts and things like that. But this is pretty awesome to have um, and it just shuts right in there um, and it's nice. It's kind of flush, um, you know, with the wall and it's, you know, not really in your way otherwise. All right, so we've got our Dometic fridge here. It's seven cubic feet. We've got a nice ice maker in here. We've got some extra ice because we were having a party and we didn't want to run out. <laughs> um, but, you know, again, it's just the two of us, but we like to eat, so we'll fill it up. And um, yeah, it's definitely enough room for us. We've got kind of these little compartments here. Um, so I want to have the uh, opportunity to give you a little bit more of the technical realities of what we've created here and why. Um, you know, we've created this really simple, beautiful space that feels at home. And that's our core driving kind of motivator is a space should really feel like a residential home. You know, we're not trying to create something that feels too dark or, you know, overly decorated. We really believe in creating something simple, something very nice, clean and white that allows you to feel, you know, just at peace in a way. You know, the light quality of a space is so important to us. So everything you see around here is white for a reason. Now it's not just the color white, but also the quality of the surface itself, which makes it extremely durable. We chose aluminum for all of our cabinetry. Now this isn't really something that's been done before. And you know, I think it was done back in you know the mid century, right, right around the fifties, when you're gonna see a lot of this kind of wrapped metal cabinetry that was in kitchens. Now that's no longer uh, being used. I think it was predominantly because of cost. You know, a lot of our kind of cost savings and you know, manufacturing realities of the turn of the century um, kind of just made a lot of stuff cheap. So we believe in creating a cabinet that is not only extremely durable, uh, it's all aluminum, um, but also very lightweight. So um, there's, a, there's another cabinet here that I'll pull aside and we'll probably get some um, detail shots of that and we can actually pull it apart and see what's inside there. But what you'll see is uh, the cabinet itself is a very light gauge aluminum that's wrapped all the way around and then you have a larger, well actually a thicker aluminum sheet on the back that's mill finish. Now this is a, um, you know, some folks think it's powder coated. It's actually heat treated paint over the aluminum. Now there's a reason we went with that is that powder coating inherently is very brittle. Now when you have a heat treated paint, you can kind of play with the flexibility of the paint. So when we take this panel, this is already finished. This isn't something that we create, bend, and then paint after we're done. The panel comes pre-painted. So we literally bend this around and create this kind of form over a foam core. So there's foam inside and then there's aluminum on all uh, six sides and that creates our cabinet itself. Now, as Joanna said, we specify some extremely high quality hardware. Um, hardware is one of the things that you touch every day. It's something that should just plain work. Now, this is marine grade, it's all stainless steel. And by design, every time you close it, it's, it's latched. So this is one of the things, kind of the major failure points, having lived in small spaces for decades, almost a decade now. These darn latches, not this latch, but most latches you find in a mobile space, they're constantly failing. Cabinet doors are coming off. Cabin I've seen cabinets themselves that come off of walls and then you open that door when you finally get to where you're going and you gotta spend the first hour of your vacation or just your night. If you're full timing it, you gotta clean up all that stuff. So it's really nice just to have cabinet latches we can count on. So why don't I go now into why we selected this product that's on all the horizontal surfaces. Now this is another kind of product like Corian. It's a half inch thick and it's inherently slightly flexible. You know, there's a reason we don't put quartz or other products that are a little bit more rigid because if you don't have that flexibility when you're driving down the road, you could get some cracking, some breaking, but this is also very durable. Um, it's repairable as well. So say you do end up damaging it, you can literally scrape out the damage section and put some putty in there, sand it down, polish it out, and you have a brand new countertop. So we believe in maintenance is something that's really important to us as well and recognizing that you have to see how it's gonna look over a decade or generations. You have to plan for that. So there's something we really are sensitive to and we take a good look at. What you might notice too is that when you kind of go to the side and wrap up, this is that same exact white product that we put on all of our cabinets. This is again, everything you see that's white is metal. You know, it's a very residential feel, but it's extremely resistant 
to kind of scratching, also any kind of staining. You know, it's this is the same stuff you'll find on most commercial travel trailers that are on the outside of that product. So we use exterior rated um, kind of paneling and put that on the inside to make sure it's that cleanable, that resistant to wear and tear, and it's something that's gonna last for a very long time. So something that really defines what living vehicle is, is quite simple, but the implications of that are extremely complex. Living vehicle, by definition, is a space that's designed to live in. Now, when you think about that, a small space that's designed fundamentally for full-time use can get very difficult to execute. You have to have enough storage. You have to have enough kind of usable space. You can't drive your partner crazy because of the design of the space. You have to have places to go kind of just to enjoy yourself. But another one of the real realities of a full-time space is that you don't get to move out, put your trailer into storage in the winter and move into a conditioned space that can kind of resist extreme cold. So by design, we really have to make living vehicle a four season vessel. So what we're standing in right now is a true four season unit. It's designed to go down to zero degrees, well above 100 degrees and still function. You know, a lot of uh, tiny homes and travel trailers you see that are on the market today aren't able to go down below freezing by design, is that you're really gonna suffer some of the realities of frozen pipes, frozen water pumps. Some of the things that they have to deal with to actually mitigate that are things like costly and inefficient heat tape that, that pull all this power from your um, batteries or maybe your 110, which limits you to being on the grid. So what we've designed here is not only a four season vessel, but it's a vehicle that can go off grid for extended periods of time in a four season case. So what we believe is that if you're in this space full time, you don't have the luxury to be able to put it into storage in the winter and go live somewhere else. So this is something you have to use full time. So there's some ways that we accomplish that and it's you know a thousand little design techniques and some fundamental major design techniques that actually execute on that. So what I can start with is the fundamental design of this unit is that to accommodate this four season use is we've built a basement into the first 18 inches underneath the finished floor where I'm standing right now. And that's a truly conditioned space because underneath this finished floor, we have our chassis. Now the chassis is what holds up everything. The, the walls, the components, you know, what I'm standing on right now is supporting by the chassis. That's aluminum as well. Now that chassis on the far side, there's no, there's no insulation right in the chassis right there. That's, in what's called the conditioned space of the basement. So on the other side of that chassis, you have about 12 inches of space. Now in that very vital 12 inches of space is where we've located all of our tanks for holding water and waste, our freshwater tanks in there, all of our plumbing lines, all of our sensitive electronics, and also all the storage that you can access from the outside is in that conditioned basement space. Now, because that con basement is conditioned, it's not just kind of a passive conditioned space where we're taking one vent line and pushing that vent into the basement space from the heater and expecting it to stay warm. We've fundamentally designed that to be a return, what's, it's called, a, I'll get a little technical, it's called a return air plenum. And that literally means a space where the furnace is located inside and it creates a negative air pressure when it pulls air into the furnace to push air into the vents. So inside that return air space is the entire basement. So we've located vents in the floor. Some of the vents are supply vents and some of the vents are return air vents, which actually go into the basement space. So by having the return or colder air, it's not cold air, it's just the return air, go into the basement space, condition that basement, keep everything that's in there warm. And then the supply air is forced back through the vents and then up the floor. Now. On the far side of the basement, that which is kind of the underbelly of the entire unit, we've located three very strategic structurally insulated panels or SIPs for short. Now those are three inch panels which are located on the far side of the basement to create a true insulation value. You know, you, we're not doing this kind of put our insulation up here and then have a basement by design and just have a little layer to protect that space. No, we're putting the, the insulation on that far side, which really protects and kind of by design makes that space conditioned for very cold or very hot climates. Um, another benefit to that just by design is that our chassis is quite literally a radiator. So it's like radiator fins. So when you think of a warm floor, typically what folks do is they run uh, plumbing in the floor itself, and it's called a hydronic heating system. We have something very similar. 
because our chassis, which is located in the condition basement, that chassis becomes warm and radiates heat into the floor itself, thus warming up the space and having a very pleasant to the touch environment. You know, we're always in here using this with our, uh, you know, our shoes or sandals off. You know, it keeps it clean, but it also, it's warm when we have the furnace running. So if I extend that and then take it from the basement up to the walls, you know, as I said, all of the, the, the frame here is made out of aluminum studs, 16 inches on center, and that's covered with what's called VHB tape. Now that's a 3M product called Very High Bond Tape, and it's about as simple as you think. It's uh, double-sided sticky tape, quite frankly, you know, made for industrial and commercial applications by 3M, a very uh, capable company. Um, and it's designed to hold two like materials together. So we use VHB tape everywhere to hold a lot of this together. Now there's some advantages to VHB tape as compared to screws or rivets to hold panels together. Uh, VHB tape is continuous. You don't have these uh, kind of penetrations of a rivet hole or a screw hole to let in water. You know, the tape is on the stud you put tape and then you put the first panel on over the tape. Now we put the second panel over another piece of tape on top of that, which allows this continuous seam all the way down. So by design, we really um, make, make sure that kind of that water infiltration is mitigated. You know, that's something that I'm very familiar with, with kind of my history of designing for vintage travel trailers, is that water infiltration is ubiquitous. It's just common in every single unit. You know, it's something that we all deal with. So, um, you know, as an architect, I understand the detailing and our company is just obsessed with these details. Now, another benefit to VHB tape is that we specify different thicknesses depending on the application. Um, by virtue, uh, just by simple construction, um, VHB tape is a non-conductive material. So it also acts as what's called a thermal break for um, our wall assembly. Because it's on the far side, the panels, which are exterior, they're all aluminum. And now aluminum itself is a very conductive material. So the panels to the touch, if it's a very hot day or cold day, they'll be hot. However, it doesn't transfer into um, those studs and then also into the interior space because of that thermal break. Now on the wall itself, we have a couple different options of um, insulation. Depending on your heating requirements, we have uh, fiberglass, which is very lightweight, and you can get about an R7 value. Uh, if you need something more, we can do spray foam insulation that about doubles that. Um, of course, there's some disadvantages to spray foam because uh, it does weigh about five times as much as fiberglass. So, you know, the higher up you get into a into a mobile space, the lighter weight you want that product to be. And we recognize that intimately. You know, when traveling down the road, performance is not just the shape of the unit. Performance is where you locate the weight, the distribution, not just horizontally, but vertically in the space. So by locating all the heavy stuff down low, it keeps the ride quality extremely good when traveling down the road. So as we continue up, you'll notice that everything up here is starting to get very lightweight, just by virtue that everything we've made is this very lightweight, light gauge aluminum wrapped over foam. In our ceiling, you'll see that our, this is a great place to explain our ceiling construction, because you can kind of literally see how thick our ceiling is. Now this is about a six and a half, seven inch ceiling here. And what, what it's built out of, again, is aluminum. We have aluminum trusses in there. So you have an aluminum truss on the top, the bottom, and then these kind of webs in between. Um, that allows us to put uh, a bunch of insulation in there. Now, we do use fiberglass insulation by design because it's very lightweight. Also, we have enough space up there so the fiberglass insulation is able to do its job. Um, so, by keeping it very lightweight, good quality ride when you're going from place to place, but also you can get that thermal resistance because you can pack enough in there. Now, the ceiling is thick for another reason, is that when you look up here, you see some very traditional kind of powder coated residential style vents. Now these are um, part of the heating ventilation air conditioning system. Um, our air conditioner, they're on the roof, we have two of them, and it's a completely ducted system. So that means that we don't have to run all of our AC vents directly down and then you have to kind of distribute. That's all taken care of inside the roof here. Um, so it's very quiet is another advantage. The air conditioner, you don't have a lot of noise when you turn the AC on. You can barely even know that it's running. It's also extremely efficient because we've designed this ducting layout inside. The stuff that you don't even see is designed to be very thoughtful to make sure that that air circulation in the space is very pleasant. So you're not getting blown you know, in the face when you're sitting down here or there. Um, and the whole space is the same temperature, both vertically and horizontally. 
Um, so when you talk a little bit more about the AC, is that we also have some other components to the air conditioner. It's not just cool. You do have a, a heat pump in there with kind of some heat strip functionality to allow you to um, kind of have some additional backup heating load. Uh, if you're in a very cold environment, uh, you can turn on the heat strip. Um, likewise, we have a dehumidifier in there. So if you're in a very humid environment, something that's very um, important to living in a small space is condensation and humidity control. Uh, so we really recognize that and we wanna make sure we specify something that can mitigate that. Um, so that's the AC side of things, but also does a lot of other stuff as you can see. The last component of the heating and uh, or the HVAC system is heat, true heat. Um, now, I talked a little bit about this when I mentioned the basement, but we locate our furnace inside the basement itself. In the basement, that is your return air plenum, and it pushes air through the vents in the floor. As you know, hot air rises, cold air falls. So we put all the cold vents in the ceiling, all the furnace vents in the floor for a reason. Um, so you'll see that the, the vents in the floor, they're all um, nickel, uh, kind of a metal finish, and they're designed to be uh, walked on. They're very durable. They're a commercial grade quality. Um, and they're very well positioned in every room, every space, so you have a nice, even air distribution when you turn that on. Uh, the furnace is a, a traditional propane-style furnace, uh, which is 35,000 BTUs, which allows us to be pleasant and warm. Joanna and I have traveled in this space down to, I think it was six degrees for an extended period of time. That's the lowest we've been able to take it. We haven't been able to find um, temperatures much colder in the time that we've had this company going. So we're looking forward to being able to test it all the way down uh, to negative 20, which is what we're shooting to rate this for. So something we've really recognized having spent about 10 years in small spaces, when you get out in an environment, a natural environment, it's away from the city, the lights tend to disappear and the darkness comes out and the stars come out at night. There's something really nice about being able to see the stars. There's something really nice about being able to turn off the lights and enjoy the space that is darkness. You don't really realize how much light is in your home until it's dark. Media centers or technology bays or even appliances, there's these little blinking flashing lights, which is just an indication that technology is there doing its thing. And whether that's a standby light or just something that's a clock that's telling you that something's existing, you can see one right here. There's a tiny little light, that LED right there, will light up the entire room inside of a space um, when it's perfectly dark outside. So we're acutely aware of this, and we love technology, but we don't like these blinking lights all over the place. So something we're very intentional here is that we consolidate all of our tech into what's called the technology bay. And that's right above the refrigerator, this one large storage uh, compartment here. Bam, so you can see all of our tech is in one spot. You know, it's really simple and you don't really need to use this that often. You know, a lot of this can actually be controlled with your phone. A lot of it's app controlled or remote controlled. Um, but what's really nice is that this is not just the technology, it's the audio video, it's the systems monitoring. Um, so you've got, you know, I'll talk a little bit about each one of these here, but by design, we put it all in one location. So it's really easy. It's kind of at eye level so you can access it. So starting out here at this big guy on the bottom, this is kind of a high end media center. This controls uh, both televisions. One is in the living room, uh, one is in the bedroom area, which you can kind of source via either Bluetooth. You can play some DVDs or you know anything that's on your computer. Um, this also controls the audio system. We have an amazing audio system in this unit. Uh, there's speakers everywhere. In every room, um, there's uh, speakers in the bathroom, even underneath the unit firing outside. So you kind of have this very loud um, speaker system, which is really high quality. All the speakers are eight inch drivers, uh, and then you kind of have these, these high, high end uh, tweeters, which are directional. So depending on where the speaker's placed in the room, you're able to get some great sound. Uh, and that's what this controls. Um, for all the, uh, the folks that still have DVDs out there, this unit still does have a DVD slot. Uh, it probably won't be there much longer, um, but it still is there. Well, and then when you're boondocking, there's some realities that you don't always get service. Um, so you don't, can't turn on your phone or you, you know, might not be able to, you know, to play media from Netflix, for example. We have designed this for, you know, that DVD just for that purpose. However, there's always a download functionality onto your phone these days. So if you're planning on boondocking, you know, I've got everything on my iTunes library downloaded onto my phone. So when I am in that environment where I don't have service, I can still watch that media. Um, so then what you have here is uh, right now, this is our in, uh, it's our command system. So you can see where all the levels of your tanks, um, you can turn on your water heater, your 
um, kind of power to various components. This is also where you raise and lower your leveling jacks, well not leveling, stabilizer jacks. It's all automatic 12 volts. So a lot of your systems are controlled by this one panel right here. This is a uh, Gerard Products water heater control uh, panel, and this allows you to control the tankless on-demand water temperature. So every time you turn on a hot water faucet, the propane water heater, the furnace lights up, starts heating that water, and it's endless. So you can just control depending on what your you know, temperature kind of preference is. You can go all the way up to 124 degrees coming out hot water, which also makes it very efficient. The next thing you see here, this is our probably the one most important some very small device here, and this is what controls our inverter. So because we have this extensive solar system, about 95% of the unit is powered by the sun. The only system that's not powered by the sun yet is the air conditioner. So we can literally run the dishwasher, the washer dryer, we can run all the lights, all the 110 appliances, plug in blow dryers, plug in computers, and this is what controls it all. So you can see the power that's being inverted turning from 12 volts into 110 power, and that all happens right here. So this is what pulls power out of the batteries. Now there's another very small tucked away right up here in the very ceiling. This is, says midnight. This is a solar charge controller monitor panel. So this is where the power goes into the batteries. And right now you can see we're running about 490 watts coming into the batteries at that immediate moment. And as it stands today, we've put in about 2.1 kilowatt hours into the system. Uh, so you can see every day that we're replenishing that battery supply constantly. So as it stands right now, our battery supply is built by a company called uh, Renogy, I believe. And um, they're a lithium battery product, and it's the PO4, it's the newest technology. And we have two very large batteries, they're about two feet long and they're about you know, 12 inches by 12 inches, and they each store uh, 200 amp hours. Now at 12 volts, uh, that's right around five kilowatt hours. So the next thing you see here, um, getting away from the power supply side of things is now onto the technology, uh, technology and media. As you can see in Apple TV, we all know what that looks like, uh, or most of us. Uh, that's kind of our internet uh, television, allows us also to mirror our computers onto the various screens that we have so we can watch or kind of do remote conferences if we're on the road and also working. There's um, our internet device. Right now in this unit we have, it's a Wi-Fi Ranger. Uh, this is the Sky 2. And um, this is the internal um, router. So with this system, we have the dedicated antenna up on the roof, which can source LTE for a cell provider or also Wi-Fi, which pulls that signal in and it gives you that dedicated network. So every time you pull up somewhere, no matter what type of internet connection you have, whether it's cell or Wi-Fi, you don't have to connect you know, all your devices to the new hotspot um, or try and kind of mess with connecting via cell all your devices. So it's all designed to be very integrated and simple um, you know, with that one dedicated private network. And I think that's about everything. We got some plugs in here for, you know, iPhone chargers. We've got some various devices. You know, this is another mobile hotspot that we have in here. We've also put this shelf in here because we know that there's a bunch of junk that kind of builds up and we designed that all to live right there kind of nice, neatly and tucked away. All right, well, I've talked a lot about tech, a lot about details. You know, there's a lot that we've gone into, but there's some really amazing parts of the living vehicle that you haven't seen yet. And I'm proud to, you know, to hand this off to my wife, Joanna, and she's going to take us into the bathroom now. So, Joanna, why don't you come on board and take everyone to the tour? Let's go get clean. <laughs> All right, so first up, you can see kind of some more of this black locust that Matt mentioned um, on both of our doors in the bathroom and then also in the bedroom. We've got these nice little latches here. So when you're in travel mode, you know, make sure you got that secure and doesn't go anywhere. We've got a beautiful skylight here in the shower that you'll see in just a second. Um, but we've got a couple other nice features. So we've got our radiant towel warmer. We haven't been using it lately because it's been pretty warm outside, but it's kind of nice, doubles as a space heater, warms up really quickly. So I'm standing inside of our shower. You can see, first of all, we've got this amazing skylight. So from floor to ceiling, I believe it's seven foot seven. So if you, are, you know, are a tall person, you can still walk around, and, you know, do your shower stuff. We've got this pretty intense shower panel here. Like Matt said, this is the second unit ever. So we've been doing a lot of R&D and kind of prototyping different systems, seeing how they work. So the new model I think is a little bit less intense, but we thought this was fun to kind of try out. So you can see you've got one, two, three, four, five different shower settings. And this last one here is just the water temperature. So we got the one up here. This is kind of your highest flow kind of rain shower. 
Um, you've got this other one, it's kind of a spa-like waterfall. I really like that one because it kind of comes down a little bit closer to you. This one kind of sprays a little bit further over here, um, so you have to kind of walk, stand a little bit far, farther away from it. So that one's actually pretty nice. There's this one, which we've gotten rid of. I'm not really sure what area of your body it's supposed to get maybe for kids. This one is our low flow setting. So this is kind of your shower wand. We've taped it. This is not what it looks like when you get a brand new one, but just kind of playing around with when we're in off grid and you've got maybe two minutes really to take a shower if you want to really stay somebody, you know, somewhere for a week. Like we mentioned, we're still running our dishwasher, washer dryer. That's kind of the most important stuff to us so we can take really quick showers. So we've taped this just so that you've got less water coming out and it comes out at a kind of higher flow. Yeah, so I mean, the wood's really nice. Um, you know, the thing about tile is obviously it's very heavy. And if you get real tile, you know, it's also a pain in the butt to kind of apply all of that. We have done a lot of tile in our previous projects, all of our Airstream renovations. They just look really pretty, but they add a ton of weight. So the wood is really nice. It kind of warms up the space a little bit, gives it that nice spa feeling. And it's also very easy to clean. Kind of weird to admit, but we've never actually cleaned the shower before. It's just kind Kinda, I don't know, takes care of itself. You know, so this is the black locust as well. It's a very similar to teak where it's very anti-rot. Um, you're not gonna have any issues with mold. Um, so we've really, you know, used that kind of for a purpose to give it a nice aesthetic look, but also make sure that your space is staying very clean and it's really easy to maintain. This mat that I'm standing on does come out. You can go ahead and kind of clean underneath that and that's pretty easy. Um, and then we've got our last setting here. This is kind of for your feet. Um, I know a lot of people with little kids really want to have a bathtub in here. So this is kind of the best option for that. If you've got little ones, you can kind of wash them with that setting. Also, we've got some just great hanging baskets. Got these on Amazon. Um, you can add a lot more if you want, but again, just kind of helps keep all your stuff organized and clean. So you don't have to put stuff on the floor, you know, and be kicking stuff around and you just really got of this nice space to you know truly have a nice shower whether you're at a truck stop or you know in a national forest we've been in all sorts of places and it's nice to just step in here you know every time you look up i mean the sky is always a beautiful sky no matter where you are so the shower was really big for me because so many places that we lived in um, you know our boat specifically I mean, it's this little shower that you have to crouch down. You know, if you've seen Elf where he's kind of like <laughs> doing this, you know, and that's for me how I start my day. And so it's really nice to just feel like you're in this luxurious space to kind of start off your day nice and fresh. So we're in the bathroom here. You know, of course we've built in a lot of storage in here as well. You know, we really like to have kind of a place for everything and in the place that you're using it. So we have our medicine cabinet up here. Again, all aluminum. Um, ton of room in there. You've got nice shelving um, and that's above your toilet here. Just um, an RV foot flush Dometic toilet. Um, and the nice thing about the foot flush is it allows you to control your water usage, right? So if you're off grid again, um, you know, it's not adding in extra water, you know, so if you're going number one, you got to flush it down. You don't have to add anything in. Number two, you want to add a little bit, you know, to help it kind of go down, but it's really nice. You get to control that. So you're not wasting those precious drops of water if you are off grid and trying to control that. Personally, we just really designed this to look and feel like a true home. And you know, everything that you see, you know, is very residential style. So that was just kind of a preference for us. And you know, for a lot of people who might be new to, you know, trailer, RV living, things like that, really wanting to give them as much of that a continuous feeling of, oh, this is just like a home, it's just a smaller footprint. But if you want to switch out a composting toilet, super easy, you could totally do that. And we do have some customers that have done that already, just preference. So here we've got our vessel sink. We really love vessel sinks for a couple of reasons. One, you've got this nice see-through glass, um, so just kind of like mirrors, it really helps, you know, open up your space a little bit more. And that also helps us kind of save on our countertop space. Um, in our prototype, we actually had just, you know, kind of like the white rectangular sink. And it really takes up a ton of space. And, you know, we've really tested this out so much in the first one. I remember um, we had the medicine cabinet here. 
with the white uh, sink here and I was washing my face and I told Matt, I was like, this just doesn't work. I'm hitting my head here, water's spilling everywhere. You know, so it really is designed by our own experience of actually using our products. So we love the vessel sink. I mean, again, it's just, it also gives you kind of that nicer, you know, spa feeling. It just feels more luxurious. Again, it opens up the space more and you really get more countertop space, you know, where you really, I mean, not that you're putting much under there, but it really just helps kind of open up the space. So we've got a ton more storage under here. You know, what's funny is when we moved out of our boat, we kind of, you know, if you've ever moved before, pain in the butt. And it takes a lot of time. And sometimes you get to the point where you're like, I don't know what I want to do with this stuff. Let's just put it in a bag and just put it somewhere. So it's funny about 70% of the stuff that we put in here, we're not even using. So all of our extra bathroom stuff, all of our clothes, because we've got a washer dryer, you know, so I'm never even making a dent in everything I brought with me. Obviously, if you're going to different climates and, you know, different environments, you need different things. But um, yeah, I mean, we put so much storage in this thing and I just, I can't fill it up enough. Okay, so we are in the hallway right now. Um, got a couple things to talk about. Real quick, we've just got our Dometic thermostat here. Um, so we do have a ducted um, furnace and AC in the unit. So we've got our ducted AC here and then our ducted uh, furnace vents over here. So it's kind of nice. It helps kind of warm up your floors a little bit. I'm not sure if you're getting this in the shop, but here's a really cool article that was in the LA Times Saturday edition featuring Matt and I here in Santa Barbara in our unit and then a couple of our customers as well. That was really cool. That was back in May. So it's been really fun to kind of start sharing this with people. Um, you know, we are based out of Santa Barbara, but um, we have recently just actually made a decision to go mobile with our office. So we're getting rid of our brick and mortar, um, especially since we're selling a mobile product, it kind of makes sense. And you know, we're constantly traveling. So it's pretty exciting, but Santa Barbara is always gonna be kind of home and you know, the birthplace for kind of the beginning of this company really. And then down here we've got our central vac, which we really love. It's awesome, it's always on, flip it up. We've got a couple different hoses and they literally reach from end to end. You can even go outside with it. It's great for Luca, clean up her hair. She brings in a ton of rocks and dirt. She's always, you know, coming in and just making the place dirty. So it's really easy to spot clean if you've got kids or if you're just a messy eater and always dropping stuff or, you know, when you're cooking, it's super easy. You know, we have our hose kind of just behind me in our storage container just under the washer dryer. So it's nice, you don't have to go like under a hatch and pull out some big, you know, vacuum. So that's always there, just ready to go. So it's really easy to help kind of make everything stay nice and clean. Um, so our flooring is a luxury vinyl plank. What's really nice is it's super lightweight and also durable. Also waterproof, which is really great with Luca. Um, also, when we're just traveling constantly, you know, doing shows, having literally thousands of people coming in and out of our unit, it holds up really great. Again, the central vac really helps kind of keep things clean, but it's a super durable product, a lot lighter than traditional wood. So yeah, we love it. And it's, um, you know, throughout the entire inside here. And then now we're walking into our bedroom. So this bed is a true queen. Um, we do have a pull out sofa sleeper. So if you can see, this is the sofa sleeper version. So it does fold into a couch. Um, since we work on the road, this is kind of our secondary office space. So it's nice to kind of just have that additional kind of multifunctional space. Um, a lot of people like to use it for a kid's playroom, or maybe if you want to have, you know, meetings, or a lot of people have extra hobbies and things like that, whether it's music or you know, art, things like that. If you want just a true bed, if you're kind of planning on using this just as a bedroom, um, the other option is a fixed queen bed, and that's got storage under the whole thing. It's on under gas struts, so it's super easy to lift up, and then the whole thing is just storage underneath. We've got nightstands on either side, um, so kind of just your typical, you know, nighttime stuff. We've got some of our USB cords for chargers, things like that. Nice little trick, we've got a lot of big kind of, you know, plants and flowers and things like that. It's all Velcroed. It's really nice to not have to spend so much time like putting things away when you have to hit the road, especially when you're going off, you know, off road and, you know, you're going down super bumpy, you know, roads through the woods, up, you know, inclines, things like that. So this is 
really on there. We love Velcro. This is also Velcro down there and it just kind of helps um, make your kind of pack up and go process a lot easier. So we've got a great closet space here. On this side you've got kind of your full length here um, so you could actually hang pants and shirts and not have them be all folded up weird. We've got a bunch of great storage up here. And then on this side, we've got all your dresser drawers. Um, again, these are all aluminum, same slam latches. Um, so plenty of space for us. Kind of some extra space here if you wanna do blankets, towels, or have any bigger items. And then some extra room here. Of course, you've got lights in there as well. This definitely is enough room for the two of us. Like I mentioned before, we kind of just moved out of our boat and then brought everything here. I'm not wearing about 70% of my clothes that I brought with me. And we've got a lot of kind of extra sheets and bedding and towels just for guests. We always have people come over and stay with us because this unit sleeps six people total. Um, and sometimes it's nice to just have some friends over. So we've got a plenty, plenty of extra stuff, but what's really nice is our washer dryer. Um, this is a Splendid. It's a combo and we've been using this in a lot of our products over the years and it's really awesome really a big time saver you know if you're living on the road and constantly having to find the nearest laundromat to you and then it really takes a whole day right you have to plan ahead you have to make sure you've got your quarters and or your dollar bills and then you know hang out there switch things over we're always losing stuff when we go to laundromats so it is really nice when we're working you know we've got this going our dishwasher and it just really helps save us time so that we can focus on you know work focus on catching up with our friends and family at the end of the day playing with our dog cooking and not having to dedicate so much time to chores so this is a product that we really really love and then just underneath it here we've got some more storage so we've got our central vac hose like i said it's super super long so that goes from end to end got a bunch of different attachments and then we've got kind of all of our other laundry products down here um, so again, we've kind of figured out, you know, where you need storage. Okay, you've got a washer dryer. What goes along with that? Let's make a dedicated place for that. So the projector is something that Matt actually just installed a few days ago. You know, we're always kind of playing around with different ideas, but what's really cool is you've got this screen here, you know, this blind that basically doubles as your projector screen. So if you want to really have kind of a media night, we're not really big on TV. We do a lot of, you know, Netflix and things like that. If you want to put a second TV in, you know, we've got the one in the living room. Um, this is pre-wired, so you can put one here. But if you want to be a little bit more old school, um, you know, really kind of make an event of it, get your popcorn ready, all of that and project on there and um, that's super fun. And then probably one of the best features in the bedroom is this skylight. Pretty massive. It's pretty phenomenal to go to bed at night and just look up at the stars. And then in the morning when you wake up, you've got a ton of bright lights. You see, you know, the clouds, maybe there's trees above you, squirrels, birds. You really just feel like you're out in nature, but still in a very comfortable, you know, beautiful place. So we definitely love the skylight. And um, that's something that we prototyped a few years back in one of our kind of custom builds and um, something that we really just love, you know, bringing an extra light and being able to just see outdoors. So we've got the skylight here. We've got one in the bathroom, um, one in the kitchen. So we really love skylights. <laughs> All right, guys, so that wraps it up for the inside. Matt's going to take over and walk around the outside, show you all the hatches, all of our cool kind of tech bays, and um, just show you what the outside looks like. Okay, we got a great overview of the interior, and uh, now I'm excited to show you what it looks like from the outside. As you can tell, it's all kind of one color, and that is the color of natural metal. There's a reason we chose this. Uh, you know, there's a couple great products out in the day, you know, built back in the 30s that are still around to this very day, you know, many of which are, you know, Airstream or Curtis Wright, kind of these vintage pieces of Americana. And there's a reason they're still around and it's, you know, in part the design, but one of the major ones is just the material itself, uh, aluminum. Aluminum is uh, naturally resistant to age. You know, it oxidizes and creates a natural patina which protects itself. 
So it never really degrades. It does corrode if you kind of leave it in a wet location over time. But you know, this will last for generations, if not 100 years. So that's something that we're really aware of. Um, so there's two different types of material that you'll see on the outside of living vehicle. Um, one is the aluminum that I just talked about. And that's what is kind of like this. It's a very light gauge. I think it's a 040, um, just strong enough to span 16 inch joists on center. And uh, then there's this one other product that you see. This is everything that's shiny. So if it has a mirror finish, that is stainless steel. Now we use stainless in parts of the unit where it requires a little bit more reinforcement, a little more structure. So you'll notice this is very durable. And whereas on the sides, this aluminum is designed to be very lightweight spanning those studs. Uh, so why don't I take you around and just show you some various parts of this so you can get to understand what all these hatches are, what the components, the pieces, the parts of the unit are. You'll see that the hatches um, are all kind of in this space, about 18 inches from the underbelly up. Now, I talked to you about the kind of construction of the unit before, where the finish floor and the chassis is right about here. Now, the structural insulated panels, which are insulating the bottom side of the unit, are right at this location. Those are three inch panels. And everything in between those two locations, that's what we're calling the conditioned basement. So all the hatches, the storage compartments or the technology, that's all in that conditioned basement space. All these hatches that we've built these are all custom. Uh, we designed and built these with our manufacturer. You'll see they're extremely high quality. They're all 100% aluminum and stainless steel. The hinge on every hatch, it's a uh, piano style hinge, uh, which goes the entire length and that's all stainless. Uh, they're all sealed with double gaskets uh, for water infiltration. And then you'll see that this right here, this is a hatch for storage. Um, we got about you know, 14 inches of clearance in here and you can hold a lot of stuff inside these hatches. It's kind of like those larger, you know, touring buses or motorhomes that you'll see, the Class A's. You don't tend to find this kind of stuff in a travel trailer. So, you know, it's very important to us. Uh, every hatch, by the way, does have a light inside. Those are all LED lights inside the hatches. Uh, that allows for access. And it's not something that'll easily bump on and off. You know, you have to turn it on, turn it off, so you don't have these hatches accidentally lit. So continuing just back of that front hatch on the curbside of the living vehicle, uh, we have this very small, but it's a stainless, um, you know, it's a 110 volt outlet. That's all powered by the sun. It's on our inverter. Talking about our inverter, let's look at our technology bay. Now we've got the technology panel inside. That's where we have all the monitor panels, but this is where the guts are. Our batteries here, our inverter, our solar charge controller, and it's all in this one consolidated aluminum wrapped compartment. The whole thing's vented and it's designed intentionally to keep all of our electronics very safe, easily to access. You don't put any storage in here. This is what you see. This is what stays inside this compartment. So let's go into this a little bit more. Um, you know, quite simply, we got where the, the power comes in is straight all the way back there. There's something that says classic there. That's our solar charge controller, very high end, uh, very heavy duty. Uh, you got a couple of breakers which control the battery and the solar, and then your batteries. This is your lithium ion PO4 batteries. We got two of them, um, and they're built by, uh, oh, it's Relyon. Relyon is the battery provider, not Renogy. Renogy is our solar panels. Uh, you do have a primary disconnect here for all your electrical system, and then to convert the power from that 12 volt low voltage to your 110 for all your high voltage appliances and outlets. This is our inverter. And as it stands right now, we installed a 2800 MagSign pure sign energy inverter that allows us to run our sensitive electronics, kind of our high demand appliances, such as your washer dryer, your dishwasher, and you can run a number of things all at once. The monitor panel inside the tech bay right above the refrigerator, that's what controls all this stuff. So you don't have to come down here and mess with it and see what's going on. You can do that from the comfort of inside your, uh, inside your space. Now. Before I close this hatch, I'll just kind of show you here a little bit more. It is a custom built hatch. We do have about an inch and a half of uh, space there. And inside this, this is an insulated hatch. So when you do close this, that space is now insulated as well. So why don't we continue back? Um, I've got this great, you know, this is simple. This is pretty traditional, but this is an all aluminum step in the spirit of um, you know, staying true to our design. We try and use as much aluminum as possible. We do have some uh, painted steel just for structural uh, rigidity on this. On our new units, there's a design feature that we've changed here is this 
uh, is now another hatch just like this. So you lower down a hatch to reveal this stair compartment so you can have your stair protected when you're traveling down the road. It also keeps the, gr the grit and the grime of the road and all the travels uh, from you know getting in there and messing it up. So right back here, you'll notice one of the main features of the living vehicle. Uh, this is the deck. The deck itself is fully self-supporting. It's eight feet wide to match the eight foot slider that you see right above it. It's dual purpose. Not only does it support um, you know, weight and become an extension of your interior space, but when you're traveling, it's very important that we protect that eight foot panel of glass. You know, that's each pane there is about four foot by six, eight tall. That's very prone to breakage, not just from, you know, movement or, or you know, jostling down the road or off road, but wind. You know, there's a lot of, when you have wind passing over a surface on the road, there's a lot of pressure differential that will literally pull that pane of glass out and kind of push it to break that panel. So by putting this up, Every time you travel, you've, you, you quite literally could not travel without it up. That protects that pane of glass to make sure that you can get to your location and still utilize that without breakage. So very important feature. It is rated for a thousand pounds. We do have these self-supporting stainless steel cables, which come down at a 45 and then uh, kind of anchor through these through bolts right to the deck itself. The deck again is 100% aluminum. Uh, we do have a gasket running all the way around for water protection when it's in the up position. And you'll see that we have, as you're folding it up, we have these great custom designed stainless steel latches, which are very high end, very heavy duty. You know it's closed. We also do have a location where you can put a latch or a bolt, uh, like a lock on there to make sure that you know no one's messing with it. So you stop at a rest stop so someone can't just open it up and then it comes down when you're traveling. We do have one final component onto this is a railing system that goes all the way around for say pets or maybe you have um, kids, children, that this can be an enclosed play pen. We always recommend installing the railing for protection purposes. Uh, we are, you know, don't have the railing installed right now. You can see that it could be dangerous. You know, if you're sitting in here and then something like this happens you know that could be your head so we always do recommend installing the railing for your safety security and protection though so if you're down here and the railings not installed something that's really nice for this is to have a kind of a poo-poo uh, Hawaiian style platter that you could put all your food out here you'll notice that this is kind of at countertop level so if you're out here enjoying a fire pit or an outdoor table picnic table um, you can now have a service area where now the floor becomes your countertop and this is now your prep area for all your food outside um, the other thing that we have that actually bolts onto the railing itself is a umbrella. So I kind of got out a love-hate relationship with sun shading devices when it comes to this industry. And uh, a big part of that is that uh, awnings, RV awnings, tiny house awnings, something that just is designed to cover your space. Now, in the traditional sense, awnings are a bear because they're expensive, first off, and they're all made out of fabric. Thing about that is you leave an awning out and it gets windy, Awning breaks, and not only does it break your expensive awning, it breaks your unit because now it's banging up against your unit and it happens every time. I've, I've seen awnings, that's like the number one repair item for warranty. And if, if it's break, broken by wind, that's your fault. So you're gonna have to spend $1,000 at least to fix that awning. The fabric alone costs about 800 bucks. So what has the industry done to solve this? You know, they come up with more expensive awnings. Awnings that automatically come out, automatically come in with little sundial or wind wind sensors that supposedly work when they break. Now, not only do you have to fix an awning, you have to fix a $5,000 awning. So I think uh, as a counter to all of this shenanigans, we've created what we believe is either create an awning that's durable, resistant to wind that will not break. And that's where we're prototyping this solar awning that you see up above. It's all built out of aluminum, stainless steel. It's on linear actuators. So it's designed to resist wind. The other thing we believe is you've got this big deck that's now not shaded. You know, we're in the shade right now, it's nice, but say it's a hot day. So we have this umbrella system that just mounts right here. It goes inside of a pole and you have quite literally a $30 umbrella from Amazon that you can just install right there. You can do the same on the other side. You can have your entire deck shaded and say the wind picks up, it takes your umbrella away. God forbid, go buy another $30 umbrella. So as we continue back, you'll look, the deck itself will have uh, kind of some, some video of me closing the deck as well. Uh, but you'll see underneath this, this kind of cover, 
This is a custom design cover to protect a, a row of springs. Now these springs are what literally help support the deck as you are lifting it up. You know, one person can lift this deck up no problem with one hand. You know, it goes up, it's self-supported by the springs, it's the spring assist, so when it comes up, it's something that's very easy to raise, very easy to lower as well. So why don't we continue back a little bit further? Uh, you'll notice here that we do have our barbecue still here installed onto the unit. Uh, there's something that is quite by design here. We've got our hatch. That's where you store the barbecue when you're traveling. Uh, we do have a propane quick connect. You quite simply locate it here and it's that easy. Your propane line is now installed. You install the other end onto the barbecue. That taps into your entire plumbing system so you don't have to use an outside fuel source, fuel container for that propane barbecue. Uh, the propane barbecue is something we use constantly. We love cooking outdoors, we love interacting with the outdoors, but we don't always like the dangerous nature of going up and down those three stairs from the entry door just to go outside to, say, a fire pit where you're barbecuing stuff. This is just a, a transition which is on the same level as your interior space. Your kitchen can be extended out onto this patio. You can take your island, you can put it right here. That's where you do all your prep. Right next to you, you have your barbecue. So it's a very natural outside transition to a, a cooking space to where it just it literally makes more floor space. But instead of just creating pop-outs that kind of artificially create space, we love the outdoors and we believe that this is probably the most valuable space of this entire unit. All right, so now just behind this, uh, this self-supporting deck structure, we have a very clean hatch here. This is a great uh, function to this unit. This is a marine grade shower setup. You just mount it right there. That's permanently installed. Uh, this is hot and cold water. Uh, you can control the flow by uh, this lever here or this lever inside here. This will turn it on just like that. So now something really nice about this is not only a shower for say you're out, you're surfing or you're enjoying the outdoors and you don't want to go inside and trap all that mud in. This is also a dog washing station. So you can get rid of all this stuff. This is waterproof. So washing a dog in an outdoor environment is kind of a bear where you've got all the dirt, the mud. So you're standing here, you take this shower set up, you have warm water for a nice comfortable dog wash. Um, you know, this unit's extremely pet friendly. Uh, this hatch here, this is probably one of our largest storage compartments. This goes all the way through to the other side. This is a pass-through compartment. You can also access this from the lounge, the very back of the unit inside the uh, dining area. You can lift up the lounge cushions and access everything that's in here as well. Uh, this is a fully carpeted hatch. You have a, also lighting inside there. Uh, so you can put things like umbrellas for the deck, or maybe ski equipment, or maybe a surfboard that's small. You know, for all other gear that's bigger than something you can fit in there, you, we put in a toy rack. Now this is just a standard two inch receiver where you can put a bike rack, a surfboard rack, stand up paddle boards, what have you. Uh, we really encourage putting lightweight stuff on the back here because when you're traveling down the road, this is where all the movement happens. You know, this is the furthest part away from that kind of center, that fulcrum. So all your motion at this moment, this is where all that motion happens when you're ro you know, rolling down the road. So put everything that's lightweight back here. This isn't designed to carry another trailer. We know you can do that in some states, but we do not encourage encourage that. Um, you'll see here, this is kind of the, the main design feature of living vehicle, is this beautiful stainless square shape, uh, which borders this, uh, this contrasting color. And this is one of the options that we allow our customers to pick out uh, when you're purchasing a living vehicle, is right now, uh, for every uh, kind of new uh, addition of the living vehicle, we offer a different set of color selections. So this one is a Monterey metallic. This is a very nice deep blue. Um, this is a powder coated aluminum, same um, as the inside. Oh, sorry, not powder coated. Heat treated paint rated for the exterior. So you'll see some other things, all the lights on here. This is all LED lighting. Um, this is a very high end, very simple integrated light. This does all three. This is your turn signal, hazard, backup, and brake, well, all four. Again, the stainless steel, this is strong. So all your corners on the unit are designed to be protected. Um, what you'll notice is that this is a fairly high ground clearance. Uh, for getting off road and making some grade changes. We do have this kind of sloped back end tail design and uh, that gets it up about two feet off the ground. Um, underneath, you'll notice it's all aluminum all the way through. So we're not exposing any plumbing. Um, that's the far side of those structurally insulated panels, which allows you to protect that interior space. 
It also keeps uh, rats, rodents, and other critters from kind of infesting the unit, getting up in your insulation, calling it home, dying, and permanently finding that resting place inside your unit. We don't like that stuff. So what you'll see now, this is a, what I call the roadside or service side of the living vehicle. This is where a lot of your kind of utility and infrastructure happen. Uh, let's start right at the very back. You have, again, the other side of the pass-through storage compartment. We'll come just a little bit further. This is probably one of my favorite compartments. This is uh, what Joanna was talking about in the kitchen. These are two residential style trash bins and they're on a drawer slide where you just pull out like so, put it on the ground. You've got your extra trash bags right here, right where they need to be. So you change out your trash, put it back in. One could be recycling, one could be trash, compost, it's up to you. And all of this is located inside a fully enclosed aluminum box which vents to the outside so you're not getting those smells. And it's all on the same side where you're servicing other aspects of the unit. Um, so again, that's by design. What you see right here, this is the furnace. This is an old location. Uh, the furnace is now on the other side of the unit where it's just next to the entry door, it's in the basement. Uh, this was an earlier version, but this is what the furnace looks like. Uh, this is uh, what con controls and heats the entire unit. Uh, we do have LED lights throughout the service side so you can access not only inside the compartments, but all the sides of the unit when you're uh, doing the various aspects of service. This is our main utility bay. There are some realities to living on the road, and those involve um, what you do with your liquids. Uh, we've made this very simple. Uh, in a conditioned hatch here, you're able to connect your wastewater. Your black tank and your gray tank are separate. Uh, you're able just to kind of plumb right up. You can bring this compartment here, this little hatch, pass through all the way through. You can bring your utility cord, also your fresh water, uh, hose goes up through here. It all connects at this location. So everything that happens inside here is conditioned. So you can be uh, in an extremely cold environment without the risk of freezing. Let's see, you've got your water pump here. Uh, in the new models, we've actually taken it out of this hatch because this is a semi-conditioned environment where it has limited insulation in the hatch itself. So we do insulate our hat, our compartments as well. So now the water pump is actually inside the basement on the other side of this hatch. This goes down to about 20 degrees. Uh, once you get down past there, you do run the risk of freezing. All right, on the service side of the unit, we have just forward of the service bay. This is another hatch. This is one of our primary storage compartments as well. We carry a lot of our service items also. You know, you can see these, these hubcaps. We have these beautiful moon, smoothie moon hubcaps. Um, I lost one the other day when we were off-road. Off um, I don't know where it went, so I took the rest of them off because I was tired of buying hubcaps. Um, we have since replaced our steel wheels with uh, aluminum mag wheels on this unit uh, for this exact purpose. But these are beautiful vintage uh, style Smoothie Moon hubcaps um, that I've chosen. I've opted to store inside of our hatch here instead of, uh, you know, toting them all around the U.S. on our wheels themselves. Uh, this is another... Um, storage uh, compartment. We do have our spare tire in there as well. Um, I'm not a big fan of storing spare tires on the exterior, even if they're underneath a unit. That highly susceptible to uh, rot, degradation. You know, you have a lot of elements where you finally need that spare tire. You go to it and up, oh, it's destroyed because it's been in the environment for the last 10 years. Uh, so, you know, we believe in putting it inside of a conditioned space. Just forward of that compartment, you do have our propane-fired tankless on-demand water heater. This is made by Gerard Products. It's the second generation, or I guess third generation of that unit. We find it works out really well. Um, on the new version of this unit, we've located it a little further back because we want it closer to the utilities. So we have it closer to the shower and kitchen sink, which are the two primary uses of the water. So you have less water run to go through to wait before your uh, water gets hot. So that's, you know, even that short run, when you have a limited water supply, every drop counts. We do have another light right above the, uh, the water heater. Again, you can control all of these independently. This is one of the very thoughtful designs that we've had on this unit. These are our propane tanks, and we've located them here for a reason. They are on sliders, so you can slide these out. So they're very easy to access. We put them inside because, again, just like the spare tire, I don't want this stuff outside. You know, I have taken 
this unit into freezing rain before. I've had four inches of ice build up on the front of the unit. Can you imagine if that ice was on one of those propane tanks and I had to change out a propane tank or maybe the ice was messing with the line and it cracked it. You leave these rubber lines out in the sun for a couple years, they break, now you have propane leaking, fires, babies crying, stuff like that. It's not good. So we put these in this case for a, a very specific reason. It is a vented compartment, fully complies with uh, all the RVIA codes and it's very quality as well. So that leads me to the final side of the unit. This is the very front. Now what you'll notice is we do have a tongue or a A-frame that's free and clear, except for what we've put on is just a generator to tote around with us. Now again, we did that for a reason. First off, we love the fact that you can have this space for heavy stuff. If you're gonna carry around something that weighs a lot like a generator or maybe a motorcycle, this is where you want to store it because this is the most kind of weight bearing strongest part of the unit. We do have a seven inch A-frame which has three bars running back about five feet into the unit before it transitions to that primary five inch chassis that goes all the way through. Uh, we do have a rock guard which is again stainless steel on the front that protects it. This is removable so after we dent this up too much you can put another one on. Uh, we do have a camera system all around the unit. Uh, we've since gotten rid of the front camera. We found that a little bit unnecessary, but we do have cameras on the two sides and also the rear that you can wirelessly view inside your tow vehicle so you can know what's around you at all times. You can also take that camera in, or the monitor panel inside with you and be able to look at what's you know snooping around your unit at night when you know, you're camped out in the middle of BLM land and someone knocks on your door. So the living vehicle weighs right in around 8,000 pounds. Now, that's very lightweight compared to a lot of tiny homes or trailers out there these days. Again, this unit's built for full-time living. It's got a lot in it as it is configured right now. Now, we've rated it a gross vehicle weighting all the way up to 13,200 pounds. So you can carry about 5,000 pounds of gear with you. Now, while an 8,000 pound trailer is technically a half ton towable product, we're recommending people get an F250 or any of your choice, the GMC, Chevy, or Dodge line of trucks. Uh, as long as it's a three quarter ton truck and the 250 or 2500 rating, that will get you that 13,000 pound capacity so you have the capacity to take all your stuff with you. I do recommend getting a four by four version. If I could have fronted the money, I would have gotten a diesel. Uh, I've had a, a Ram diesel 2500 in the past and I loved it. This is a gas truck and it does go through gas. I probably average around, you know, nine, 10 miles per gallon when towing this. Without the truck or without the trailer hooked up, I get about 13 miles a gallon anyways, so it's not that big of a difference. Um, you know, another design feature that we really believe in is this simplistic square, kind of almost Scandinavian design, which is highly efficient, allows you to put a lot of storage into the unit. We do have this front, which has a slight curve. It's almost like a bullet where you have that flat face, but then the curves on the side. This is again, highly efficient. Your tow vehicle is what's breaking the wind and creating this very small wind you know, the wind really is hitting from here up. So we're really maximizing the efficiency of the space and choosing because every design decision is a compromise and we place a high priority livability in the capacity to bring a lot of stuff with you. So we have walked around all four sides of the unit and there is a fifth side that you're gonna get to see as we're leaving here and that is the roof. Now a lot of the very cool functionality, the solar panels, a lot of our tech antennas, some vents, and a lot of this is up on the roof that you don't get to see from down here. Now there's one really exciting thing about the roof itself is that the entire roof surface is a single sheet of seamless aluminum and that's right it is a eight and a half foot wide by 27 feet long single sheet of aluminum that has no seams in it so whenever there's a penetration that's the only place that we break that single sheet and that's by design of course is because on the roof whenever you do have a seam overlapping over time that is the highest prone area for water infiltration. So again, we're very focused on quality and the functionality of a unit, not just the livability, but how it stands up over time and wears as you use it through decades and decades to come. Awesome guys, so well, I hope you enjoyed our tour of Living Vehicle. Thanks so much for taking the time to just listen. I know there's a lot of technical stuff, but hopefully that's the kind of stuff that you guys are interested in. We've got a ton more information on our website, www.livingvehicle.com. We're super, super active on all our social. We're at Living Vehicle on Instagram, same thing on Facebook. So if you wanna kind of follow Matt and I in our adventures a little bit more, we post a lot about all our off-grid travels. If you wanna see a living vehicle, 
We've got all of our events listed on our homepage, and we're also working on a really cool feature where you can actually get in touch with some of our customers, either see their unit or just uh, kind of see what their experience has been like, whether you've got kids or pets or work on the road and just want to know more about what that's like. So yeah, check out our website and all that information will be um, in a link below this video. And something that I really want to highlight is that we are a very accessible company, you know, to the degree that we have gone completely mobile. What you saw today is not only a product that we're selling, and uh, this is our home. You know, Joanna and I live out of here full time. And so if you ever, you know, see us on the road, give us a wave. Um, you know, if you ever check and see where we are, uh, we encourage you to come to our events. Um, shoot us an email, you know, get in touch with us. And um, we really just are passionate. I hope that came through today in our video is that this is just, it's not just a product or something that we're selling or something, you know, this is our life, you know, and we've been doing this for 10 years before we created this. So um, by all means, follow along, ask more questions. If there's something you want to know more about, please do go to anything that Joanna just referenced and, um, you know, shoot us a, shoot us a question. And we're going to absolutely answer that. And uh, we're looking forward to the adventure. Yeah. And I don't know if Matt got into it in his technical stuff, but our five-year goal is a completely net zero product. Um, so we're currently looking at water generation, waste incineration. We've got a lot of fun R&D going on on the side. So if you've got ideas, you know, a lot of our products come from, you know, real life situations and people out there that have problems and say, hey, have you thought of this? Or, you know, I could really find a way to maximize, you know, my off-grid time by, you know, solar, whatever. So. Let us know your ideas. You know, that's the way that we're gonna kind of keep pushing and innovating. Yeah. And if you got an awesome piece of land or a driveway you wanna host us on for a night, that'd be cool too. <laughs> Thanks.